good week we had this week and uh, appreciate the way the kids are working and got one more one more week, two practices in, in the spring games. We got to make sure we finish up the right way. Paul, how healthy has Rafael looked to you in this spring and, and assuming he is fully healthy in the fall? How does he change what you can do with this field goal unit? Well, I think, you know, Hoff was, I think he's, he's healthy. You know, it's, uh, he's still coming. He's not, you know, I don't think none of the players are and should be really in in-season shape, but I think it's, it hasn't been bothering him and, and I feel he feels good and therefore I feel good that way with his health and, and certainly, uh, you, you know, a good kicker is, is huge for your team. And, uh, you know, I thought last year, you know, he, he was he was performing at a high level and he's got to come back and, and have that and still, you know, there's things he can do to continue to get better and, and so it's, uh, but a good half is really good for this team. Well, there was legislation passed today, a bunch of things. The official visits for juniors, how is that going to change? Is it going to benefit you guys in any way, do you think? Yeah, I think it's really good for the prospective student athletes. You know, we've got, and have had, like this spring, we've had a number of kids that, that come up and that's on their dime. And, and so I think it's, uh, it's really good for the prospective student athlete and, and we think it'll help us. I think that you'll, like typically we don't use a lot of our, there's 56 official visits you can have. We don't use and never have here. And so I think we'll use more visits, but I think it's, it's really good for the, for the process. Just basically so they don't have to spend their own money. Right. And I think, you know, there'll be some that I think the unofficials will still take place because you got a chance to, maybe hit a number of schools if it's a spring break or something or, you know, summertime. But, you know, as far as how, I think it'll be a little bit harder for, or different for the prospective student athlete to pick those five visits he's gonna take. You know, I don't, I don't know, none of us know how it's gonna impact it, but uh, will kids maybe take fewer overall visits? Really don't know, and I think it probably won't really get a feel until you get an idea but I think it'd probably take three four or five years to figure out. Did you like the early sign of day and, and what, what are your thoughts on the no two days? Anymore? That's a lot of questions Jeff. <laughs> First one was the early signing. early signing. I think the early signing is good. I think that it's um, and I was in favor of, of the, the June as well. You know if you had three signing periods that one I think it's when a kid's ready his commitment is can be real, and I think the offers that, on our part, that we give out, those have to be real because a kid could take, you know, if he's committed and you've offered, then that should be signable. And, and so I like that it's it puts validity to the two terms, offer and commitment. You know, where the December, I think it's good, but it's it's only a month, okay. and um, and then two days. Two days. Yeah. I love two day. I love practices, but I think it's uh, there's there's merit to it all. And yeah, I think we've done a pretty good job of being smart. You know, no one goes in trying to. No one is more concerned about player safety than coaches, and I think the players. And I think you do need a certain number of practices to get ready for the season, and. So however, however they do it, and I think one of the proposals, you start camp a little bit earlier and you have it and, and the mandatory, as long as they give you opportunity to, to teach and for kids to get into playing shape and understand what they're doing and how they're doing it, then I'm in favor of it. What do you like about your defensive line group this spring? And does that, does that group have to have a level of selflessness just given the, the positions that they play and maybe the other guys make the plays that they create? There, there's no doubt that there's some of that, you know, and, and it is an unselfish group, but I think it's also a group that's capable of impacting the game. And, uh, you know, there's production that has departed. And who's going to make up for that production? I hope it's a number of different position groups. And, you know, we've got, we feel like we've got good players there. And they're capable of impacting the game and producing in numbers. So uh, like it, they played a lot of football, love the way they approach it and, 
and play and prepare. And, uh, and I do, I think they're capable of, of producing as well. You know, it's not just a selflessness they got to play. They can have a little edge of selfishness, you know, it, directed the right way. Well, what strengths does, does Leon Jacobs have that make him a good fit at outside linebacker for you guys? You know, Leon's a, uh, he's a, he's a talented football player. You know, I'm excited. I think he's finding a home. And there's a guy that's, you don't want unselfish, that will do anything for this team. And uh, a guy that physically, I think, has a lot of talents to him, loves the game, and uh, will do anything for this team. And, and, you know, when I think of Leon, I think there's a guy that, can be and, and for us to be as good as we can is a, is a guy like what last year Moose did and that's to play his best football his senior year and, and Leon is definitely capable of, of making a big impact on this team. It's been fun to watch him. He's a, he's a guy that's been moved around a lot, you mm -hmm. know, been in and out of the you know out of the starting lineup. He hasn't really complained at all. Does he? No. Did, you know, what, does that show what type of guy he is that he just kind of gone with the flow? And, I think absolutely. I, and it's not, and he cares a ton about this team and he will do whatever he can to, to help it. And I think this year, like I said, I think if we're gonna be as good a team as we can be, Leon's a guy that, he's one of those seniors that's gotta play and, and is capable of and feel confident that he'll play his best football. Well, Settle, Settle is not afraid to use multiple tailbacks. Right. Do you think next year you'll have, if De when Deal comes back, that you'll have guys who can give you different things and a total package give you some productivity? Yeah, I think if you're looking at it right now, okay. I think you would say that we'll have a number of guys playing there. And until they start to, you know, one will maybe separate. Uh, but I think they've done a nice job of kind of continuing to grow this spring. It's been, it's been important for them. And, and it will be good to get Taiwan back. And you've got, Guys have played in games, but none of them have been in the role that, you know, really Corey was in or even Dari. And, and so it's, they've got to take that step forward. But uh, I would guess that it would be, uh, you'd see a lot of backs. Have you seen Chris James grow since, I guess, from the time at Pittsburgh to now? Yeah, I mean, Chris was a freshman, you know, when I was with him. And, and I think that, you know, there's a little bit more of an urgency which is natural because of, you know, he's older now and, and the number of opportunities are, are fewer. And I think he's also got an understanding of what it takes to be successful more. So I think he's done a nice job of uh, fitting in with this team. And so I'm glad he's here.